YouTube is Brad Phillips. Look at this. We've got the FMS Zero, which is in a 750 millimeter size, but it's actually called an 800 millimeter. It's got the removable drop tank, removable gear, not retractable, but super detailed gear. Love the gear, actually. We've got all these cool details. It almost looks like a scale plastic model, but this thing flies, which is super cool. And as you know, here on Brian Phillips RC, we love doing these models for you. FMS has been great to work with and they are making some good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing in the air. This is technically a V2, but it comes without a reflex. So we set ours up with an AR631, which is gonna give us access to safe and AS3X, which we have set up. But if you want, you can do it without. My suggestion is definitely you want safe and AS3X. And our gains are just over 50%. Here we go, take off flaps. Yes, that's right, we set up flap rounds too. It is technically a four channel, so you don't need to do that. But look how amazing that is out of the flaps. Amazing guys, flying really super good. That's 50% throttle there on 2S1300. 30C Venom Pack. Just making some easy circuits around the yard, keeping low so the camera crew's headache doesn't show through because of the sun. And as you can see, this thing flies really good. We're gonna go into 100% throttle there, do some more generic moves. Upside down flight performance is not really so great there. I'm gonna try it here again. Oh yeah, there's enough elevator there. I think we just had the wind with us. Okay, and rolling out of that and coming down the, the runway here. Rudder authority is better, I feel like, on this one than the T28. I felt like we didn't have enough rudder and now we have enough rudder. And I love the striking colors. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's go bull. Yes, very good. So obviously this is a zero, so it'd be the Japanese zero and just an absolutely gorgeous looking plane. Love flying warbirds. Let's see how it does with takeoff flaps. Here's takeoff flaps. Here's landing flaps. Look at that thing actually works with the wow, flap yeah. runs, guys, out of the takeoff flaps and landing flaps and just into ordinary flight mode. Here we go, we're gonna get into a flat and level and just do some ups for you. On 2S, it's got plenty of ups, but it will eventually stall out on the ups about something like this. That's about all you can squeeze out of it and just listening for the voltage alarm. We've set it to 3.6 volts, which is a little bit higher than we would ordinarily do, but only because of voltage sag and cold. We have much better conditions than our actual main flight. It was a little bit windier than we were liking, so we're loving this thing right now. Let's try touch and go. I mean, this thing is just really woo, rock solid. But the thing is, that was a terrible touch and go. Oh, can't quite get it down. Okay, so we're gonna do safe now. They're safe. As you can see, it's automatically leveling the plane. Looks like I could probably get a little bit more down on the safe, but just pushing the nose down, you do have to kind of work it a little bit with safe. Oh yeah. And then letting off the sticks when we get around. As you can see, lots of stick input to get the turns, but it just keeps that thing nice and level. Coming out of safe here, we're gonna roll out of it and go down the runway, you good? Mm -hmm. Sorry about the sun there. Full throttle. Use the rudder on these warbirds, folks. Use the rudder to give the subtle change in direction of travel. And you'll love the way it looks. Just narrowly missing our flagpole there. As you can see, this thing just cruises. It'll scoot along, looks very scale and awesome. Of course, this plane in real life would be a cruising fast and very agile warbird. Let's try cornhole in it. It does not like the cornhole. Listen. Okay, camera crew, I need you back in the center if you don't mind, and mm -hmm. you can just work your way back. Perfect, right there. Thank you. Okay, take off flaps, landing flaps. Here we go. We're just gonna, woo -wee! Okay, a little bit of rule authority lost on that pass just because of the flap rons, and that's not unusual. You're depending on a fairly small rudder, so get your alignment right. Takeoff flaps give you more authority than the landing flaps. Okay, so get rolled out. Okay, there we go, full landing flaps. Oh, oh, no! Everybody died! Guys, we haven't killed a plane on Maiden lately, but that was technically our second flight. Let's go see how bad the damage is. It looks like I broke the nose off. That's pretty much done. But at the same time, you'll notice that the pilot was ejected and everybody died. So that's normal. <laughs> what did I do wrong, camera crew? Well, you should have just taken your landing. I should have just taken the landing, except did you see I was running into the snow? Wow. Okay, so that thing popped out. That'll be an easy fix. Okay. 
This yeah. thing here is the canopy. It just came off. That's nothing easy nothing special. I did trim a little bit more to make the battery fit. And then, oh boy, she looks very upset. I hate it when the entire nose breaks off of a plane. But you know what? To be honest with you, that'd be an easy fix if it weren't for the prop, okay? Mm. So everything is still working on this plane with the exception of, of course, the prop. So I could have this thing glued up in not very long and have this thing back in the air. But guys, at the end of the day, this thing is a fun flying plane. So we hope you enjoyed the video and we hope that your, your Zero will end up a little bit better than this one because uh, I crashed it into the berm of snow. And that's one thing to watch out for as you are flying in the snow. Keep in mind, berms are plane killers and that is a short berm. Doesn't take much when you got a small plane. Uh, so guys, without further ado, thanks so much for watching. If you wanna buy this plane and enjoy it, follow the links in the video description below. You can imagine what it'd look like if it wasn't broken in half, but we do love these little FMS planes. And yes, this one's no exception. We really enjoyed it. Super fun build, real easy, and definitely stay tuned. You can watch that Unbox Building Radio setup, and we'll be back with more content on Brian Phillips RC. We hope you guys will stay with us. If you want to become a Patreon, special thanks to you, you guys that are already supporting us on a monthly basis. We have links for that above uh, all the rest of the Help Us stuff. And we also have a link to PayPal, if that's something you'd like to do. So we really appreciate you guys that are supporting us financially, but the best way to do it is watch the videos, smash the like button, Come back for more amazing content that we're trying to do our very best for you guys on. And then also definitely buy the planes when you like them from the links below. Thanks for watching. Okay, YouTube, we just crashed this plane. Feel bad that it got crashed because it was just a mistake. I caught this landing gear in the snow, which of course pulled it into an unrecoverable stall. And then I, I just didn't have enough juice to get out of it. But no big deal because look at this, guys. This will be super easy to fix. And I just want you guys to see if you're new to the hobby, you may not realize just how easy it is to fix this. First thing you're gonna do is if you have your plane here, you can just move all the control surfaces. Of course, I've unplugged my battery. So that's always a good idea before you dig into fixing a plane, make sure your throttle cuts on. You can actually initiate this plane just like normal. You might have to hold it level. And once it initiates, see this thing is actually in a different position too, cause that was sideways, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to get that figured out. So we're just gonna stick that back on here. Might need to dry the surface. Cause in our case we had snow involved. So I'm just gonna actually tack that up a little bit, dry the surface. I'm gonna wrap the antenna the way we had it, if I can get it right. Actually, we'll just let it come out this way. And we're gonna stick this right here, like it was, because it is spatially aware. I'm gonna hold that for just a moment. Okay, now, did it initiate? Yep, okay, so we have rudder, we have steerable tailwheel, we have elevator, we have ailerons, and we have takeoff flaps and landing flaps. So everything is working, with the exception, of course, the prop. So let's go ahead and take this apart real quick. You just hold this part right there, and then you take off the eggshell on the top. Then this comes off, then the prop comes off and you can easily replace that. Now follow the links and you can see spare parts. Um, also, if you're in Canada, you should be able to order spare parts, but there may be different links that you have to follow. So just make sure you follow a link and then there'll be different choices that you can follow. Go to the plane and there'll be spare parts on the links at the bottom, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So then we got a couple of different choices for glue. If you watch the Unbox Build Radio setup, we heated this stuff up in warm water and then used it. And then we used a little bit of this foam to foam. As you can see, we are almost out. So we've been waiting on that for a little bit because it's been out of stock. So what I'm gonna do is I'll unplug my battery you know, you can turn off your radio or you can just leave it on, it doesn't really matter. And then I just wanna take a look at how this broke. So the first thing you do when you're fixing a plane that you crashed is evaluate for damage that's unrecoverable. And then you can figure out if it's worth your time. In our case, this is definitely worth our time because it's not a hard repair. Because all we have to do is just remate these surfaces here. And it's very easy. All you have to do is look and see where there's a nice clean surface. And it's so easy to actually stick these back together. See, watch this. It's amazing actually, in some cases, it's super, super easy. See how easy that is? And you won't even notice that it's broken once you've glued it back together. You'll be able to fly this thing for, you know, a million more crashes, and then you'll probably have to fix it each time, of course. But then usually what I'll do when I'm fixing something like this is I'll grab some toothpicks because it's a very light duty application. And if I need a bigger repair, then I'll use reinforcements like this. These are actually a little bigger than I used to have, but we got these things and you see how they're sharp at the end? It makes it super easy to pierce the foam. We use those on the J, or not the J11, but the SU27 here recently when I crashed that because of a broken linkage, okay? So this is a different situation. This is just pilot error. So I'm gonna take these two things, okay? So it's just wood. And you can see this thing doesn't have like a tremendous amount of strength. 
So it's like, how is that gonna be enough to reinforce a plane? Well, really what it is, is it's, it's, it's the group or it's uh, strength in numbers, okay? Because the foam is really gonna hold itself together. This just pins it in place, okay? So what you have to do is, and then also if you crash in the snow, you do have to be a little bit careful about your work surface being dry. You don't wanna get wet on where you're gonna glue parts together. Okay, so the easiest way to glue this is with CA. You would CA all this, and then you'd maybe spray kicker on the other side, and you would just slide it into place just like that. And you don't even have to pin it, but what's happening is you see how there's weight there? We don't want that weight to be a factor, okay? So as a result, when I do this, I'll probably end up pinning it back together at an angle like this, okay? That's gonna give me some strength and resistance to this falling off, and then I'll probably pin this that way. And so we'll have a couple of different pinpoints and that's just gonna hold it in place until the glue is cured and the glue will hold it, no problem, okay? And then you've got basically your finished look, okay? So let's do that right now. The other thing you do is if the ESC is giving you problems, you can just unplug that from the receiver and actually take that, put it out of the way, and then it won't be tripping all over itself while you're working. But in my case, I'm just gonna leave it there, okay? So let's see if we can squeeze out enough of this foam to foam to finish this project, guys. I don't know if I have enough, but all I need is this surface here and this surface here, and that's it. I like foam to foam. I prefer it over mucilage because it goes on easier and it's easier to use, but I prefer mucilage when it's good, when it's new, and when it's not dried out in the tube. Also, if you guys notice, I'm wearing these black gloves. These are nitro gloves. And nitro gloves, ooh, see, more glue, or excuse me, more snow. Oh, Oops, yeah. I missed that, guys. Sorry about that. Let me just put this towel over it and take it out of my workspace. Okay, so now there's a little bit of that sticky glue right there. I wanna get a little bit more. And ideally, you're gonna cover up that whole surface and you're gonna use probably about twice as much of this glue that I've used in this. But since we're short, that's what we get. Now, the other thing you can do is you can take and use a Q-tip which is a really easy way to spread that glue. But just keep in mind if you're short, you don't wanna spread it too much because you may not get all of you need. So what I'm gonna do instead this time is I'm gonna use a toothpick. And you're like, but you're gonna spread it with a toothpick and aren't you just gonna waste it with a toothpick? Yes, but then I can use a toothpick to plunge in and make my pinpoints, okay? So I'm gonna actually have the camera crew hold that with her hand and then I'm just gonna slide this into position. Now that goes under the wing. And then you see it just pushes together. And, and that's all you have to do. Now tack it up a little bit. So spread it on both surfaces, give it a wiggle or two, and then you can pull it apart and let that set up for just a minute. Now, while we're doing that, while it's setting up for a minute, we could start figuring out our game plan for the undercarriage, which came out. Now the undercarriage was glued in, it was fine. But as you can see, we just really ripped it out. It was kind of a clean rip. Yeah. So it should be no problem. That'll go in there. You won't even know it was broken. Unless, of course, you crash it again, and then you'll know it was broken twice. So, this is tacking up, and while that's tacking up, I've learned that this mucilage is really bad sometimes when you first get it because it comes with the tip already cut. So, it will actually cure in the tube if you don't use it right away. So, make sure if you, if you find yourself ordering this stuff, don't order too much of it because when you order it, it's going to dry out on you. So, we're going to pause. I'll show you what a new tube looks like just so you guys understand. Okay, so this is a new tube of mucilage, okay? So we're gonna actually stick this in here because I got interrupted by a phone call. And we're gonna see if the glue has set up. If it has, then it won't be tacky enough to hold. But as you can see, it's holding and the real test, I'm gonna support this just in case I'm wrong. Isn't that crazy, guys? That stuff is a contact cement and you can see how well that stuff works. I only used a couple of drips of that. Yeah. Now, the alternative one that I always talk about is called mucilage. This is foam to foam. We have links to this. This is mucilage. So I, I received this on June 28th of 2020. So it's been a long time. And that's what I was talking about is look, this one is already got stuff on the tip, which is not a good sign. And then as you can see, it is working, but just, I mean, I'm squeezing that hard and it's coming out. Now, the good news is it's coming out. The bad news is it's coming out hard, which means by the time this tube is gone, it's gonna be pretty much set up. So the second thing I'm gonna do is that this double-sided tape is not making good purchase down here where we mounted it, mostly because it got ripped off. And so that means that the foam is probably a little bit too slick. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re-secure this. Is that the direction we were going? I believe the bind button was towards the front of the plane. Yeah, so I think, I that's think so correct. too. Okay, so I'm just going to try this again. Now we will show one detail. Yep, it's not sticking. So what I'm going to do is in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the mucilage to apply to that spot. It's going to tack it right back up. And you're like, that seems like kind of a crappy way of doing it. It is probably a crappy way of doing it. So you are not wrong. Okay, so we've tacked that up. We're just going to let that sit for a minute. And then the camera crew is going to, actually, I can stick this in the lid. That's another trick. Okay, okay so now we're going to flip this upside down. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, why do you always crash your planes? Uh, that's what happens when you fly planes, you crash them. And if you don't ever crash them, you're probably not flying them to their full potential. <laughs> that's, or you're not a good pilot like me. So anyway, let's look at this, guys. So I'm going to squeeze up the glue. I'm just going to get crazy with it. And where did my landing gear go? There it is. So I'm just going to basically figure out where the foam was, okay? Because you can see that's where the glue was working. So I'm just going to glue to that. And then this part needs to come out. You see that little tipsy part right there? So I'm just going to kind of miss it. Oh, right. And I'm just going to glue these things, okay? I'm just going to kind of go around the edges, just kind of hit them. If I get a little glue on what needs to come apart, it's not the end of the world, okay? So there, I've got that there, got that there. See how it just covers up all those points, but you don't want to cover up the spot you got to remove, okay? And it's really not any more complicated than you have to make it. You stuff that into the hole, spread around the goop, and then you can pull it back out. And you're like, why would you pull it back out? You've already got it in a perfect position, Brian. That's because this stuff will then react and cook off is what we like to call that. Doesn't need to cook off for very long at all. Maybe just like honestly 15, 20 seconds while we get this receiver stuck back down, okay? So the receiver's here. I'm gonna let this just rest on the wing. It won't hurt anything. And then I'm not even gonna worry about this antenna wire. I'm just gonna stick this right back where it was and we're just gonna let that set for a second. And that should get into position and be just fine because here in a minute, you see, it's already stuck. It's already stuck. And that double-sided tape could be just as easily peeled off and replaced, so it's no big deal. There's more than one way to skin a cat as part of the reason why we show these repairs. It's not that it's an especially hard thing, but it's an unusual media if you're not used to using with, uh, working with foam. So if you're, if you're an old timer and you're used to working with balsa wood and all this, this stuff is gonna look comically stupid. But the thing is, if you get a foamy and you don't like it, I would be surprised because the thing is, they are good flying planes and they are really, really beautiful and they have tons of details. So just kind of touching up some of the spots that got peeled off and the rest of it is cooked off. So now all we got to do is flip this plane over. We'll stick the landing gear back in. And these little spots they get spilled over into like that. We kept this Q-tip, right? There's two ways to do this. You can use a Q-tip to peel that out, or you can take the one that's still got the tacky tip on it that we used earlier, and watch this, watch this. I'm just gonna take that glue and just lift it off of the finish. Just roll it up, see how it's just sucking it right out of there, okay? And then if you can literally do that with all the glue, and if you've got a little bit too much on there, now you can come back in here and you can do this. Now you can do that with your bare hands too, because this stuff will peel off like a booger, okay? Yep, that's right. Camera crew gave me that look again. Like, Brian, you're not supposed to admit these things. Right. It's okay. Pretty transparent on Brian Phillips RC. I think we're past that point. We are totally past it. Okay, great. So now let's flip this plane over and you can see we got a little bit of rockiness and apprehension on the nose now. The reason that we have rockiness and apprehension is because I don't think we have enough glue on there. I would like to peel this out and just re-glue it a little bit more. I felt like we were trying to get what we needed and we just maybe don't have quite enough glue adhesion. So we'll do a little bit more. Pinning plus a small amount of glue probably would have been okay, but I just will trust this better if I can get a little bit more glue on there. And then I just noticed that my right hand is clean and no glue, but my left hand has just a little bit of glue and I'm hoping I don't peel the finish. See, that's all you gotta do is just the spots where you were, okay? Then we're just gonna spread this a little bit by taking just some of the, the excess Okay, and just working it. And then I wanna lay that down, let it cook off for a minute. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more on this side. Probably need to apply a little bit more. When this is brand new, it will come out more like the foam to foam, but it's never gonna be quite as viscous. This is always thicker, okay? So obviously the viscosity of the fluid, the thicker makes it a little easier when you're trying to tack up from a repair, but it makes it a little bit harder when you're trying to get into tight spot where CA would typically be used. And there's nothing wrong with using CA for a repair like this. It's just that I feel like this stuff keeps a little bit more 
um, rubbery tendencies, so it's a little bit more resilient for the next time that you crash, which is inevitable, if you're me. And so it'll hold up a little longer. Okay, so now I'm not even gonna let this cook off hardly, hardly at all. We're just gonna slide it back in. Okay, so as you can see, guys, we did just redo that because I just don't think I had enough glue on there. Now, I can take both of my pinpoints and I can just pin these, okay? So I'm just gonna pin it like this. And I wanna go as steep as I can so I don't hit the wing because the wing is technically removable. Now, another tip that you guys have seen me use before is when you're doing this, if you grab a pair of forceps, you can use forceps to hold on to the actual toothpick in front of this ledge, okay? And then you can force it in, okay? Then I'm gonna walk it back and force it in and walk it back and force it in. Now, the option is yours. You can do nothing or you can let that dry or you can break it off or you can push it in. Generally speaking, I push it in. If you push that in, you might protrude into the wing a little bit and that's okay because I'm not planning on taking the wing off, but if you are planning on taking the wing off, just keep that in mind. Okay, also you wanna keep some purchase through this material, so I think it would be better to cut it. That's another thing I've done. I use side cutters to do this step. Side cutters that are gonna have a smaller head on them for like cutting small zip ties work the best, but this is what I have in my drawer in the kitchen. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna take my other, my other pin point, and I'm gonna literally take and push it into the pin, and I'm gonna slip like usual. Okay, and it's slipping. Oh, goodness gracious. Now it's gonna be a pain. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it with this now because it's got that groove on it so I can press it in. Okay, now that I'm past where I need to be, I can just re-secure the joint and then we should be good to go. And that's gonna hold that as the glue totally sets up. It won't take very long. I mean, you could probably fly it um, just in a few minutes, but you don't want that whole nose to fly away from the plane. I've had that happen before. Um, now this side, I'd like to get kind of an opposite pin point if possible. So I wanna pin this way and I can go way into it then, but I wanna get some, I wanna get in through this so I get some material to hold it. So just kind of spinning that in. I'm holding the joint right where I want it as I penetrate. You wanna make sure you're penetrating at the right spot, because if you penetrate in the wrong spot, you could get yourself in big trouble. Okay, great. So now, I know I showed that earlier, but obviously that is going to work. It's just more a matter of, you do sometimes have to babysit the mucilage because it's a little thicker product. The joints will tend to actually do this. They'll go pull apart just a little bit, and so you just repress them and you're done. Okay, if you let the material cook off, long enough, you press them and they'll never pull apart, okay? And I'm serious, like the foam around it will rip before that stuff rips, okay? But we look like we've got it there. So now the next step, of course, to get this plane back in the air would be to figure out a prop and then probably get this thing parked inside. So we obviously have to get the, the electronic speed control back where it goes, but honestly, I didn't like where it was, but it was helping with CG. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of thinking about it now that it's yanked out of there. What do you think? I think we're just gonna have to put it back where it yeah, was. Yeah, I think. Just cause the nature of the, the build, there's just not a lot of other places that it'll make sense. So the Predator was pointed up before. So just kind of try to copy what the manufacturer did. So I'm gonna push that forward, I'm gonna push it down, okay? And I'm sure you guys saw that when I pushed down, it kind of bent the nose. Not a big fan of the way that's bending. So I think what I might do is I might actually pin this I'm just thinking about pinning it two more times, but I wanna know where I'm gonna pin it is gonna be effective if I'm gonna pin it. Because now that we've changed the way everything's held together, I wonder if I should pin here. Yeah, I think I might pin here. Which is gonna be a bummer because I'm gonna basically, re removable wing will be no longer for me. Oh. So I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and pin like, I wanna hit an angle where I can not damage anything. Oops. That didn't work. I broke that. So I'm just gonna come in here like this and I'm gonna press that tight. And I'm gonna go into where the landing gear would be if it was retracts, okay? Which actually, if there were retracts on this, you could go in through that pocket, but there's usually a weak spot there. So I'm gonna pin it one direction 
and then I'll probably pin it the other direction as well. That's just gonna give us two more contact points. And even though the glue would eventually hold it, I just wanna see this repair to its fruition because I know a lot of you guys are watching at home and thinking, you know, I crashed my plane, I need help, I don't know what to do, I can't get help at the hobby shop, the old farts at the flying club don't wanna help me, and um, you know, what do I do, Brian? It's like, I can't afford to buy 700 planes a year like what we see you guys reviewing. I get it. That's a normal and ordinary problem as a beginner. So you will learn eventually that you just have to do some of this stuff. Now, the other thing too is the glue on the main that we had to re-glue is gonna do that same thing that I was talking about. You see how it's kind of walked back a little bit? So as you just kind of periodically check on it for the next 20 minutes or so, you're gonna need to potentially repress this, okay? So just make sure you're double checking it a couple of times. That's common with mucilage. It's not so much common with foam to foam. We haven't experienced that as much with foam to foam, but you do need to use enough foam to foam and we were just out, so. Okay, so now the other thing is this antenna, we made this little pocket for it to park in. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, pass this back through and get that back into position so it's ba basically ready to rock and roll. Except, you know what, now that I think of it, because the battery does go forward, I could just repocket that over here. Why don't we do that? Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's going to be easier. Yeah, than we trying didn't to, need we, the space that we thought we were going to Yeah, need. right, right, exactly. So I'm just going to make this pocket right here. Oh, crap. I tried to go, and I went a little bit too deep, but that's okay. We'll be fine. See, look what I did, camera crew. Oh. I feel kind of <laughs> stupid having done that, but stuff happens. So now the next thing I gotta do is redo it so that the steepness of the angle is shallower. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it so that it goes into the pocket. That's perfect. So there we go. All right, so now that that antenna is better secured and safe and out of the way, we can go ahead and let some of this stuff dry. But while drying, I wanna probably put it upside down. And when I say drying, I mean it's gonna be drying for approximately half an hour to an hour, I would imagine. And that's all it's gonna take, but I wanna take the load off of that wheel so it doesn't, it doesn't press at an angle as the weight of the plane bears on it, uh -oh. okay? So we'll do that, and then also, I wanna go look at what I've got for props and see if I have a prop that I could replace into this, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I did have a prop. It was a dynam, <laughs> so anyway, sorry, sorry about that. So this is a broken one, this is a good one. I don't know that the pitch is exactly the same. I think this is pitch of 4.5, this is a pitch of six. So it is definitely the same. It's, this might be a seven and a half versus an eight, but this one says it's an eight, six, three. So it's an eight circumference, and then it's a six for the pitch, and then it's three blades. I thought this was an eight, four, five, three, but I could be mistaken. And so anyway, what I looked at first was I looked at this. Does it fit? The depth is the critical member here, okay? And if the hole is big enough, then you should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this on here, okay? And then I'm gonna see if this all fits together. And this is just one of those things where you just gotta kinda use your best judgment. Sometimes you can get away with it and sometimes you can't. So there is one difference here and it looks like the depth is just a little bit different because of the way this seats down. This sits into that cavity oh, shoot. while this doesn't, okay? But I think we could still make this work. And what's gonna happen is we'll just end up with that gap until such a time as we can get the proper prop, we can at least try this. Now, I believe I can still make this lock down and we'll see if it works. Now, if you were in a pinch and you, you had to fly it like this for you know years or whatever, then you would just take off your spinner and you would just sand down that little groove and then you'd be golden. That looks pretty awesome. I think it's gonna be fine. It's definitely about the same size. The pitch looks similar. I gotta admit, I don't think it's exactly the same, so the performance may change a little bit. But at the end of the day, you know, we're all about sharing our real experience here. And that's what we do on Brian Phillips RC. So the other thing too, is we talked about this earlier, but at the end of the day, when you get a Venom pack, this is a 1300 milliamp 2S. Now we don't have a smart pack in this size. I don't know why, but we just happen not to. We can use these S155s because it's only a 2S pack, guys. That's a small battery. And so this is only a 55 watt single channel charger. We usually use the S2200 which is a significantly more expensive charger and it's definitely dual channel. It's definitely 200 watts per channel. That's a lot more power. But the thing is, you're only gonna use that power once in a blue moon because generally you're gonna charge at a slower rate. Okay, so we're gonna plug that in, we'll press play. 
We're gonna go up to the voltage, or excuse me, the current. It's 1.3, so we're good there. So we'll scroll down to start and start it. Okay, so as you can see, this thing claims we're at 65% of the charge because we're at 3.9. So just keep in mind, when you're flying in cold, you're gonna find that your lipos will almost shrink back, and when you come back into the warm, you'll recover some. So keep that in mind. We flew for a little bit. It wasn't like a super long flight, but I think we did make it over. Four minutes, yeah. Yeah. And so obviously when you crash, then that kind of undermines your plans. But at the same time, we don't want you guys to be scared away from crashing because crashing is, after all, a little bit part of the hobby. Um, also, I wanted to just talk about this too while we're in the middle of this build. I don't like the JST connector. This, this is something that we used to see uh, more frequently on the size of aircraft. I must admit, you can get two S packs that have JST connectors, but I'd really like to see at least an XT60 on this because it's gonna be more capable of, of handling more current. And so as you can see, I've got adapter to adapter to adapter. That is stupid, it's the dumbest way you can do it, but I wanted more nose weight on this plane and we got it. So as a result, that was actually a net win for me. But if you really wanted to do this right, you would just cut this off uh, while it's unplugged, of course, and then you would solder on an XT60 or an EC3 or whatever it is that you need to uh, facilitate the batteries you choose or a T, uh, T connector or a Dean's connector. Um, so whatever type of connector you use, I would not recommend on a long-term basis using adapters. But for us, you know, we may only fly these planes three, four, five times. Um, in the course of reviewing them. So full disclosure, that is a reality we face that might not make sense for most of you guys. So then I'm just gonna come around. You know, I told you about this. You just gotta babysit that once in a while. You'll press it back down. The next thing you know, you've got your plane back in one big piece. And then this joint here, same thing. We'll have to kind of babysit this as we go. Just make sure that joint stays collapsed. It's right there. And then we'll make sure that this joint right here stays collapsed. It just happened to break in that thin point there. And then also, once in a while, you might wanna do something like this. Take yourself a toothpick, and this is after the glue has start to set up. You see how it peels up? You can actually take that out of there, and it's quite easy. You'll just take this toothpick, and you can actually work out some of that extra glue if you want, and it'll roll onto the tip of your pointy thing, whether it's a toothpick or a bamboo skewer, and that'll keep the plane looking really nice. And obviously a little bit of touch up paint probably wouldn't kill you, but at the same time, you certainly don't need to do that. So that all being said, we're gonna let this battery charge. This plane has already been resurrected. I don't know, what was that, about 25 minutes of work? Mm -hmm. And to be honest, you know, we had it paused for a few minutes getting tools and things like that, but that's really no joke. And look at that thing, it's ready to rock and roll, essentially. Now I'm gonna let the glue set up for a little bit. We'll fly another plane for a few minutes while you've got an opportunity. And then we're gonna go ahead and come back. Now you guys will see it right away, but there was gonna be a little bit of a gap just for this glue to set up. So here on Brian Phillips RC, we like to not only show you what's latest and greatest, but also teach you a few tips along the way. I know a lot of you guys know how to fix foam, so please don't hear this the wrong way. But at the end of the day, we have so many new pilots out there that are trying to make purchase decisions. That's one of the best things you can do here on Brian Phillips RC. You can say, oh man, I can't believe that thing broke when he crashed it. Well, yeah. If you crash a plane, they tend to break, no matter what you do. But also, I would say that we did point out a bit of a vulnerability on this nose. So I'm not gonna try to cover that up for FMS or any other manufacturer because at the end of the day, we answer to you guys, our awesome, amazing audience on Brian Phillips RC here on YouTube. So we appreciate you guys coming back, supporting us as you always have, buying these amazing planes when you like them. And at the end of the day, if you crash a plane, plan on repairing it. Sometimes the manufacturer has defects and we point those out. So at the end of the day, we're gonna help you guys make a better decision than you might be able to make by just buying and trying and finding out. Because sometimes it's better to let somebody mess around and find out. And that would be what we do. So hopefully we can help you guys skip over some of the planes that are not worth fixing. And this one is definitely not one of those. This is a great plane, super fun, really detailed, absolutely gorgeous. I am a sucker for scale aircraft, especially warbirds. And camera crew, what'd you think of the flight in the better weather? I thought it was amazing. Yeah, it was really good. In the wind, it kind of sucked. The wind, but it was really windy. It was really windy though. The visibility's good. Visibility was good. Love these. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think that Japanese symbol would be so good for visibility. No, it's really good actually. 
So, and then also I feel like the ordinance is, is maybe a little bit lame because of the plastic here. It's just a lot of plastic. But beyond that, I love the scale appearance. I love that they had the painted prop. Of course, now I've destroyed that. Right. Um, but again, that would probably cost five, six bucks, seven bucks, something like that to buy the actual prop that goes on this plane. So we'll see how it flies in about 20 minutes to a half an hour after we've let this glue dry up. And if you guys have questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. And also we don't mean to mislead if we end up showing the next flight first, or this flight in the order of operations. We may not show the windy flight. We don't mean to mislead. At the end of the day, it's just like, if it shows it really bad, we don't really like showing a plane that doesn't perform at all because of the wind. It's not the plane's fault, it's the wind's fault. Now, I understand some of you might be saying, but I wanna see how that plane performs in the wind. I'm telling you right now, you don't even need to see it. It was not very good because it wasn't that fun. And planes that aren't fun to fly, they don't look good, it's not fun to watch the video. And then what ends up happening is that this plane will get penalized by an average RC pilot thinking, boy, that thing sucks. So we have made a habit of trying to fly planes in as good of conditions as reasonably possible. That's why we do it at minus 10. Right. right? Yep. So anyway, guys, definitely check out the links in the video description below. You're going to love this plane. It's not a super expensive one, but just make sure you add up the cost of the receiver versus its big brother that would come with the Reflex V2 versus a cheaper receiver like an AR620. Because at the end of the day, we want your dollars and cents to stretch as far as you can. But also, this is a small plane. It takes up a lot less space than bigger planes. And that is something you need to consider if you have 400 of them in your basement. Just saying. Yeah, are you considering? What, that we're gonna do smaller planes too? <laughs> yeah, we've already, we already do that. So anyway guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, comments, leave them in the comments, Patreon, PayPal, and links for the plane at the top of the description. You did Brad Phillips again. Look at this, resurrection flight time on the P. B-51. No, this is a zero, guys. It's a zero in the 750 millimeter size, which is also known as 800 millimeters if you're FMS. So we're gonna take this thing off. I put a new prop on because I crashed it into this general vicinity. You can see where the tracks are leading out to the death scene. And what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna take off and not crash, hypothetically, correct? Okay, right. everything's been tested. AS3X is already activated. Dig off laps, here we go. Oh yeah, we're good. Look at that, beautiful. Okay, out of the takeoff flaps. Absolutely gorgeous, folks. This Dynam prop is doing the job. For once. For once, that's right. Upside down flight authority is good. And we're just rolling around and making the camera crew work for it. Absolutely looks amazing, folks. Really happy with my repairs. It was an easy repair, definitely took care of the job. And I love the way the zero looks up against those trees. And yes, the wind has changed direction again. That's like the fourth time today. And I hear manned aircraft, so I just need to check for it real quick. We're definitely below. Could be a semi, but I think it's manned aircraft. Absolutely gorgeous pass, folks. In toward the sun, we'll keep it nice and low just to be on the safer side. A Little bit of rudder there. Absolutely love the way this thing flies. There's a full speed pass coming. Here we go, full speed. As you can see, she'll scoot along okay. Not gonna be a speed demon. And that's okay, because sometimes you just wanna fly kind of slow. Okay, full landing flaps coming in. Just keep in mind the rudder authority is weak on this plane. So if you do flap runs, which we have, okay, we are seeing a manned aircraft about a thousand feet above us right now, just so you know, camera crew, okay. we're gonna keep it pretty much on the ground as in below the trees. Okay. okay. So we're totally safe and he is now past us. So we're good. He's probably looking down and saying, is that a runway? Because I see an airplane. <laughs> Should I go wave at that guy? He looks like an aviation enthusiast. Okay, here we go up and stall turn that thing. Look at this, guys. Beautiful. Just love the way this thing flies for a 2S1300. It's got everything you didn't expect it to have and more. And then with the AS3X and safe equipment, this thing just really does the trick. One thing I can definitely say is it is not probably gonna be the easiest one to land, just given the fact that the wheels are rock hard. Very good roll rate. That was about 45, 50% on the stick. 
up into the sun, sorry camera crew, and around. But as you can see, the thing does great. Really enjoy flying it, it's fun. Granted, we have been without flying for a little bit because of the, ooh, almost caught our. Yeah, you did. <laughs> almost caught our mosquito <laughs> zapper pole thing. Which we're gonna probably move. Camera crew, why don't we come up to the driveway here? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna just go out here. A little bit further, please, thanks. Perfect, right there. Okay, turning around, it, it is a little bit disappearing with the silhouetting effect, but any plane would do that. Get full landing flaps and get your butt out of the way of the berm, Brian! Guys, flapperons do it every time. You lose your roll rate, you lose your roll authority, so take off flaps this time. We're gonna let it slow down. Okay, full landing flaps there. There we go. And that's what I was afraid of, guys. It's just that subtle side wind. Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't break the prop again. That'd be super embarrassing, but I didn't. It survived. Super cool. We are gonna definitely put this back up in the air right now because I'm not gonna end this flight on a crash. But at the same time, I just wanted to point out the fact that when you depend on flapperons, you give up two things. One, you tend to have to still fly a little bit faster, in my opinion. Two, inboard flaps aren't that hard to add. So if you really want flaps, you might be better off to just cut a couple of flaps in and then add one good digital nine gram servo or two three and a half gram servos so that you can control those maybe nine gram servos if you really want to make it heavy, you can do that. But you have enough channels in this configuration, it would fly amazing with those. Okay, takeoff flaps are pretty helpful, but the landing flaps are just gonna take away all your roll authority. As you can see, we got good authority with the takeoff flaps. Which makes me think maybe I just need to land it with takeoff flaps. Yeah. Instead of landing flaps. So now I think we have a, just a little bit of rubbing on the cowl from the motor. All right, so takeoff flaps deployed this time. We're gonna bring it in. We're gonna try to slow it down. Watching our silhouette and here we go. We'll just bring it in here. Whoa, yeah, there it is. There it is. Don't oh, get down. No, <laughs> don't you be doing it. It, Guys, did, uh, it, it just totally crashed. It just wind vanes. <laughs> it wind vanes just enough and this little rudder doesn't quite get it done, okay? So I'm gonna try, we're gonna try again. If at first you fail, what do you do? You just keep trying until you fail even more miserably and it's a million pieces, that's our timer. No flaps this time. There we go. And what I can say is for sure, still a little bit of rudder trim issues. And I just feel like the rudder on this and the T28 somewhat anemic. I wouldn't say they're bad. It's just not as good as I'd like. Okay, take off flaps this time. We'll bring it in keeping our air speed up so we can see. You guys see how it's wanting to walk? There we are. Oh yeah, cheating this time. Yeah, baby, we got it done. We did not crash. It's a miracle throttle cuts on. Okay, so as you can see, we threw that one for a little bit longer. It does seem to be warming up with the sun having baked the surface of our planet here for several hours. And as you can see, that beautiful thing sitting in the snow is absolutely gorgeous. What a sweet looking plane. The Zero by FMS. This is actually a 750 millimeter, 800 millimeter plane. Right, yes. Which makes no sense. But at any rate, it is 750 millimeters and it is in the 800 millimeter size class. So just to be clear, if you were to get an F4U that's an 800 millimeter and it's like 762 millimeters, they're gonna call it an 800 millimeter in most cases. Not always, sometimes they just say what it is and sometimes they say what class it's in. So this class, they wanna make a class that's gonna be scale between the Warbirds, which is super cool and I love that about FMS as they have done such a great job of really capturing the scale lines that I want and demand in an aircraft. Now, the other thing too is fixed gear, I feel like are totally reasonable on a tricycle Warbird in this price range, but I would love to see some LEDs or some flaps. Flaps are, I mean, for me, flaps make a plane because you can bring it in, make that landing in a shorter distance. So if you have a small park flyer like this, I would love to see flaps, even though it's a little bit more expensive. I think most of your average flying um, RC enthusiasts are gonna be willing to pay a couple extra bucks to have those flaps. So one thing to consider FMS when you're looking, but definitely a gorgeous plane. Love the fact that this does come off, but I like the way it looks, so I'm gonna keep it on there. And I keep wanting to throw the retracts because I think this thing would look so sweet. Obviously you can go ahead and take off the retracts, or excuse me, not the retracts, but the landing gear, but they did a really nice job of beautiful fixed gear. As you can see, beautiful door, and then they're detailed on both sides, which is unusual 
for fixed gear on a small plane in this price point. <clears throat> but still, music wire, still a little bit of resilience, still a little bit of give, but you're more likely to lose this thing out of the wing than you are to have that actually work. So just be clear, this plane, if you belly land it, you're probably gonna break this, 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 but you're probably gonna be okay, I think, <clears throat> unless you're not. Because I broke mine on just one little edge of snow and it flipped. So that happens. I did kind of fly into the ground though, admittedly. So at the end of the day, definitely not a manufacturing defect, definitely only my fault. Uh, that was just a stupid flight. Um, and at the end of the day, I really like this plane. It's cool. It's my first zero, which is kind of cool. I mean, we've been doing this for a while. We've never done a zero. Yeah. So super excited to be bringing it to you now. And definitely FMS did a great job. Guys, get one from the links in the video description below. If you want to see how we did the repairs and you haven't already seen it, not sure how everything's going to fall in this video, but if this ended up being the best one, guys, stay tuned. We'll show you our flight where we did crash it and you can see what we did to fix it but I think this prop is very close to what the stock prop was. The difference is, of course, the little stripe there, and it's just a little bit deeper. So we've got this gap here. If you see this gap, that gap would be closed up if we're using the stock prop. So really cool, definitely cool on 2S1300. I imagine this thing would probably run on 3S, but I'm not quite willing to test it yet because I kind of like it and I want to keep playing with it. So stay tuned, guys. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. If you want to become a Patreon, first of all, thanks to our Patreons. If you want to be one too, you can check the links in the video description below, just below this plane, the battery, the receiver, the transmitter, the things that we normally link on every video we do, which by the way, there's like thousands of them. So if you have like a short prison sentence or something like that, and you're in RC, you can watch all of them. If you have a long prison sentence, you could probably also watch all of them maybe a couple times. But Keep the thing up. is, yeah. as usual, we just want to appeal to those people that love our videos and we really appreciate you guys being part of it. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Don't forget to buy these things from our links and definitely smash the like button. It helps us to counteract all the negative impacts of having long format, which is what we know you guys are demanding. Today's day and age, people are spending a ton of money on these planes. We want you guys to make good purchasing decisions. We're gonna help you make good decisions by showing you the no BS truth about these beauties. And yes, that means including crashes once in a while. Sometimes they're my fault. Sometimes they're FMS's fault. Sometimes they're somebody else's fault. But at the end of the day, I love flying these things and we really appreciate you guys letting us do it for you. Thanks for watching.